again. Welcome to back to Miss Legend Stories and Tales with Lady Leoden. Today we're going to go to Germany and this is a legend uh, about the Pied Piper of Hamlet. There is evidence of this be actually being somewhat true. It probably didn't happen the way it happens in the story, but a lot of the circumstances are kind of the same. The Pied Piper of Hamlin, retold by Renata Reiki. Hundreds of years ago, the people of Hamlin, a town on the River Weiser, lived a comfortable and prosperous life. The mills down by the water turned busily. The townsfolk had plenty of flour and bread, vegetables and fish to take to market. Day after day passed by. The good citizens of Hamlin had not a care in the world, and they couldn't imagine this happy state of affairs ever coming to an end. But one day, the rats arrived. At first, only a few rats came, enticed by all the delicious things to eat in the houses of Hamlin. But soon, there were more, and more of them. Oh no! Have you ever had mice in your house? Well, rats are even bigger than mice, so yikes! In a very short time, the streets were swarming with those greedy rodents. People hardly dared step out of their doors. The rats even made their way into the kitchens and the cellars. Fear and anger filled the town, and worst of all, no one had any idea how to get rid of such a plague of rats. What do you think you would do if you had a plague of rats? One day in the year 1284, so the old legend said, a strange man appeared in Hamlin. He was a striking figure wearing a party color or pied rope. such as the townspeople had never seen before. The story tells us that his name was Bunting. He said he was a rat catcher, and he promised that, in return for a good fee, he would rid the town of Hamlin of that plague of rats. Have you seen people in party-colored clothing? Oh, how anxious the good folk of Hamlin were to please the stranger. They begged and implored him to help them, promising him as much gold as he wanted, if only he would rid them of the rats. Before long, they had struck a bargain with him. The mayor himself gave his word of honor that the rat catcher would be paid the promised fee. The next day, the rat catcher walked down the streets of the town. He had taken a pipe out of his sleeve, and on it he played a tune that had never been heard before. All over town he went up the streets and down alleys, and wherever his music was heard, the rats came scurrying out of the kitchens and cellars, storerooms and stables to follow the Pied Piper. When he thought that not a single rat was left behind, he led the procession out of the town gates and down to the river Weiser. He enticed the rats into the water. The current washed them down into the depths 
and they all drowned miserably. So he did what he said he was going to do, didn't he? How relieved the people of Hamlin were to be rid of that plague of rats, but they were already wishing they hadn't promised the rat catcher so much gold. Why, it had been a ch it had been child's play for him. All he had all he had needed was his pipe. So they made all kinds of excuses and wouldn't give him the gold he had earned. The Pied Piper left the town in bitter, in a bitter, angry mood. Oh dear. What do you think's gonna happen? But soon after that, on the 26th of June, the legend says, he returned, dressed like a huntsman with a big red hat. There was fury in his eyes, and he wanted his revenge. Once again, he took his pipe from his sleeve and began to playing a strange melody. The people of Hamlin had never heard anything like that tune before. What do you think's gonna happen? But while the devout town townsfolk prayed in the church, the piper walked the streets of Hamlin once more, and a strange thing happened. All the children who were old enough to walk ran out of the houses and crowded into the streets, just as the rats had done before them. They followed the magic, magical notes of the pipe, blindly trusting the piper. They surrounded him and ran after him without once looking back. The mayor's own daughter was among them, although she was really too old for children's games. Yet again, the Pied Piper stepped out through the town gates, and he led the crowd to a mountain near the town, where he and the children all disappeared. Ooh. A nursemaid had seen what had happened as she followed the piper's procession at a distance with a baby in her arms. But then she turned back and brought the dreadful news to the town. Only two children, says the old story, returned to Hamlin. One was blind and he could tell the townsfolk what he had heard, but he couldn't show them where the piper had led the children. The other was deaf and mute and she could point to the mountain but she couldn't say what had happened there. Ooh. Sorrowful parents hurried out of the town to search for their lost children. All the mothers and fathers were weeping and wailing. Messengers were sent out by water and on land to look for any trace of the children, but in vain. In all, 135 children from the town of Hamlin disappeared that day. How sad. And that is the end of the mysterious tale of the disappearance of the children of Hamlin. Ever after, no one was allowed to play music in the street along which the Pied Piper had lured the crowd of children out of town. Or so the brothers Jacob and Wilhelm Grimm tell us in their version of the legend. Even when a newly married couple left the church to the sound of fiddles and pipes after their wedding, the musicians had to stop playing their instruments as the bridal procession went down that street. No one was even allowed to beat a drum there. And, the narrow, so, and so the narrow alley was given the name Drumless Street. The end. What did you think of that story? What does it mean to keep your word? Well, the people of Hamlin learned very 
a very hard lesson about keeping their word, didn't they? A lot of times, keeping your word isn't going to create disastrous consequences. But they can sometimes do that. If you promise something, shouldn't you follow through with it? Sometimes there are extenuating circumstances. But in this instance, they didn't want to pay the Pied Piper because they didn't want to pay him. They didn't think that his what he did for them was worth the money they had promised. Think about that. Do you think that something is not worth what it costs? Do you think that your word is not worth you know, what you say is not worth following through? Something to think about. That's all the time we have for today. We'll see you next time.